Caddis Maximus here. Just talking about this Black & Decker half-inch hole gun, model 1309. Paid a whopping five bucks for it. A lot of the tools from the, I guess, late 80s, early 90s, you'll probably, the early to mid-90s is, or the mid-90s is when they transitioned to DeWalt. You'll notice on some early DeWalt tools, you'll kind of recognize this motor housing. The Black & Decker Professional. It's from the era when Black & Decker had a million different types of branding. They had Black & Decker Automotive, Black, Black & Decker Industry and Construction, Black & Decker Professional. A lot of the Black & Decker Professional branded tools are really nice. However, I think the 1309 kind of falls short. It uses their whole gun labeling, which back in the 70s they came out with, and they were some really nice drills. And then they got a little bit cheaper in the 90s. Some of them, like their 3 8 drills, were all, all ball bearing. However, on this half inch unit, it's only a four and a half amp motor, 600 RPM, it's a triple gear reduction, so adequate torque. But on this half inch one, they were just trying to make it a significantly cheaper than Mo <laughs> the offerings that like Milwaukee had. And they just got a little chintzy. One is the four and a half amp motor, it's just a little bit weak. The other thing is kind of a funky side handle. The chuck isn't bad, but we can see that it isn't a one-piece steel chuck. It's not a Jacobs chuck, um, but it is a pressed steel collar. This upper geared ring is what's actually engaging the teeth, but they did use a pressed steel collar. It's pretty thick, but it's also still cheesy because it's not one-piece machine steel. And surprisingly enough, this is not all ball needle bearing. There's dual ball bearings on the motor, uh, a large ball bearing, primary bearing for the spindle, but it's using sleeve bearings for the idler gears, the two idler gears in the gearbox and on the back of the spindle. And we'll take it apart and I'll show you. I'm familiar with these drills. And that was always a kind of disappointment is they had a better model, which was the extra heavy duty one, super rare. Um, but they put the professional logo on and on this particular drill, the 1309, it just wasn't as good as other Black & Decker professional label tools, which didn't make sense. They had their Wildcat uh, pipeline grinders. A lot of those are sold with a professional label, and those are absolutely awesome. Like I said, their 3 8 drills were all ball bearing or ball needle bearing. But for some reason, just to hit a price point on these half-inch drills, they just chinsed a little bit on them. A little bit weaker motor, and once again, sleeve bearings. Sleeve bearings are okay. People criticize me for criticizing sleeve bearings, but they just don't roll as smoothly as needle bearings or ball bearings, especially in a power tool. You do lose a little bit of power doing that. This has sat around. We have some really odd pock marks in the gearbox. I mean, it does sound nice. And overall, I mean, it's not a bad drill. The spindle is nice and tight. No end play, no side-to-side -side play. The gearbox is pretty, you know, it, or excuse me, I should say the truck does have a lock screw in it. And, you know, overall, it was an adequate drill. It just wasn't, wasn't my favorite. This is the era when they had the world's smallest reverse levers, a little matchstick. Pretty smooth, uh, variable speed on them, though very linear did like that and of course a lock which has been disappearing on more modern tools some of the other materials you know the power cord hasn't held up the best I'll end up swapping that out but surprisingly enough the strain relief whatever they made that out of has held up just fine drill a couple holes just using a one inch auger bit this could probably handle a, a bigger auger bit um, but it's still it's just a little disappointing, that 4.5 amp motor. They should put like a 6 amp on this. And you can hear it bogging down almost as much. I just did a video about the DeWalt DW222, 6.7 amp, 1200 RPM and uh, it has an excellent bearing setup and surprisingly enough this thing is half the rpm and seems to bog down just about as much just because uh the four and a half amp motor is you know 
adequate for a 600 RPM half inch drill, but it isn't great. And part of it is those sleeve bearings. They're just sapping some of the power away. But it, it was adequate. It just, it's not my favorite of professionally labeled tools made by the Black & Decker Corporation. Just for giggles, we'll go ahead and do this Porter Cable of 7514. This is one of the older ones with the, not the black linear trigger, but the uh, hinge trigger. This would be sometime maybe late 80s, early 90s, right around when that Black & Decker Professional came out. On paper, this should have right about the same amount of power because this is 5.2 amps at 750 RPM. So a little bit more amperage on the motor, but not geared down quite as much where that Black & Decker is 4.5 by 600. Once again, 5.2 by 750. But this Porter cable, as we can see, has a genuine all billet steel uh, Jacobs chuck. And let's see how it does. just seems to not bog down quite as badly. And one more time, why not? Even though on paper, both these drills should have right about the same amount of power. As you can see, this Porter cable just seemed to have a bit easier time of drilling those holes. So as that demonstration was, it was just the fact that, um, I think really the big difference is simply the fact that this has those sleeve bearings on the idler gears. When you start getting under high loads, and since these are spur gears, they mesh on the edge, they're pushing themselves apart with a lot of force, pressing into those sleeve bearings pretty hard. And they're just causing extra resistance and extra heat where that Porter cable, of course, is all ball and needle bearing. But surprisingly enough, that Porter cable really did. I mean, it was drilling those holes faster and it seemed just to be not working quite as hard as this Black & Decker even though on paper, quote unquote, they should both have just about the same amount of torque. And uh, that's why I never really liked 1309s, but I figured for five bucks, add it to the drill collection so I can make those comparisons like I do. Whoop. Don't want the motor to pop out. I mean, the build quality is more what you might expect. I mean, it is a metal diaphragm with a metal gearbox we do have matching holes here and here so that the gearboxes maintain really precise alignment when you take them apart and put them back together that way the pitch angle of the gears they're staying in the exact same alignment as they were before which dramatically improves gear life Makita and some other brands some of their quarter drills don't have that when you put on the gearbox you can feel the gearbox shift back and forth super annoying because it means that the gears don't maintain the same alignment and they really want to stay straight. It's particularly when it comes to straight cat gears, is if, they, if they're not straight and they pitch off a little bit, that means you have the corner of a gear engaging. It starts to wear off and what you have is this highly concentrated point and it wears really fast as it travels down the gear essentially. As the wear point travels down the gear rather than matching nice and evenly. Gear life is dictated by the precision of the machining and the precision of the alignment. No joke. Gears can last for years or they can last for days just depending. We do have a seal in here we can see but as of course my criticism and the same thing with the spindle but these are just sleeve bearings. 
and yeah, this can be upgraded where you just you just get a bearing with the same inner and outer needle needle bearing, same inner and outer diameter, and you could upgrade this. But nonetheless, it's just a little bit cheesy on the professional drill that they did use so many sleeve bearings. It was just kind of a cost cutting measure that didn't really cut that much cost, but does cut into the performance and ultimately the longevity of the tool. Because of course, needle bearings take a very long time to actually wear. Sleeve bearings can last a long time too, but in this type of situation, since they're working in a gear case, the forces are always going to be in the same direction, kind of wearing a little lobe so that the gears kind of want to spread apart. As the although they'll probably last as long as you know a quarter drill like this would ever last. Taking a further look into the gearbox. We do see uh, a nice design, which I like, which is the gear teeth get progressively larger as it goes through the reduction stages that's to increase the strength of the gear teeth. They do need to get thicker as you're applying higher and higher loads. So they're pretty fine at the motor. And then on the second stage, we can see where they're starting to get thicker. And then we can see on the final drive for the spindle that they get even thicker still. And that's something that's with pretty much all drills even to today it's just proper gear train design finer teeth at the lower torque and higher speeds and at lower speeds and higher torque you need to have increasingly coarse teeth so that they are deeper have thicker engagement and have more in specific tooth strength if you are servicing these old tools when they have gaskets after literally decades of sitting there tight they really get bonded and you have to you know be super ginger super careful just gently get in there and slowly work up the edge of the gasket otherwise you'll just tear the darn thing and here we have black and decker's ubiquitous clock spring design this is found in even their most current mo these brushes are a little bit smaller than in the higher amperage, most current ones, but basically the same design, a little cast zinc brush holder, a little clock spring. These have little lead wires that go direct from the brush. So just a little bit stronger, really easy to change the brushes because you have little windows to really release the little uh, clips. We have a, kind of hard to see there. Oh, I wiped it off, maybe you could see it better. It's a six amp rated trigger on a four and a half amp motor. That's a decent overrating, so not too bad there. Other than that, nothing uh, too spectacular going on inside here. That wire got a little jammed up, but it's not too bad. They were also doing something interesting in this era. They just have the special molding in the handle, which just sits in there and pinches the cord for the cord retention. And what I mean by interesting is we can see this part here. So this would just have a traditional, there'd be two screw holes and a little buckle that would go over the cord. But this is part of why the cost cutting on this drill is they eliminated the screw holes in that little buckle just to have a, a, an in-molded version it's instead. Anyway, that's the Black & Decker 1309 hole gun, half inch uh, drill. I'll end up replacing the cord, but just isn't my favorite half inch drill and then this will end up just becoming something to compare other drills that I get in the future. Maybe as a loner when somebody just needs a half inch drill it won't be one that I'm heartbroken if it doesn't come back or comes back broken. Anyway, really appreciate everybody who's been watching. See you next time.